So the Cancer Registry is uh, a large registry sponsored by, by Janssen Pharmaceuticals. It's a registry of over 3,000 patients uh, across Europe. And it's basically the largest and the first real-world data that we've got of men with metastatic castrate refractory prostate cancer. So for those who aren't familiar with prostate cancer, this is men who are, whose disease is getting worse despite having had lowering of their testosterone. So castrate refractory prostate cancer is a term, a relatively new term in the last five years, and it basically means prostate cancer that is getting worse despite us having lowered testosterone to castrate levels. And this used to be an area where there were very few treatments that uh, had been shown to have a, a benefit. And one of the, one of the registry recognises that actually several treatments have now shown significant improvements for our patients. So that's abiraterone and entolutamide, which also uh, target androgen receptor biology, radium-223, uh, which is a radiopharmaceutical that targets bone metastases, which are the predominant site of metastases for prostate cancer, and chemotherapy with docetaxel and cabazitaxel. So what was an area of very little treatment now has several. So the registry rec recognises that and is trying to get some real-world data of those treatments in this very important and common disease. So we have data on 3,000 men. They're going to be followed for up to three years. Uh, and we're going to look at how well the treatments work. We're going to look at comorbidities. We're going to look at sequencing of treatment. And I think clinical trials are, are fantastic things and they lead to, to drugs being registered. But they don't always reflect the real world, as, as you'll know. They're, many patients are excluded because, perhaps because of age, fitness, comorbidities. And so the registry is allowing us to see how those patients do so patterns of practice as well as a real glimpse of how things are in our clinics. Well, the, the registry is now fully, fully enrolled, so it's fantastic. It enrolled very quickly with, with 3,000 patients across uh, several European countries, I think over 19 countries. Uh, we were lucky in the UK, we put in uh, 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 over 300 patients uh, from the UK. Um, so there's no more enrolment, but it's very important we keep on following up those patients so we get the, the robust data, particularly on which drugs are being used, how well those drugs are working, and also sort of sequencing of drugs. We've presented some of them, so we presented some of the data uh, today at uh, this European Society of Medical Oncology meeting. So we presented data on um, almost 2,000 patients who've been followed for, for a, at least a year. And that showed, gives us a, a gives a hint of where the drugs are being used. Um, we use sort of chemotherapy as a, as a guide because some of the studies were done uh, in sort of what's called the pre-chemotherapy, the post-chemotherapy setting. So we can see that the majority of, of abiraterone and enzalutamide, which are probably the drugs which have made the biggest impact in my opinion, we can see that they're being used predominantly prior to chemotherapy. We can see those drugs are very active um, and that the activity that we see in clinical trial setting is being reflected in the real world. We can see that's despite having more patients, say, over the age of 75 and more patients with, with significant comorbidities. It's a fascinating data set and it's only going to get more and more interesting as we get longer follow-up. So we'll see actually what patients are having in the clinics and also patterns of care across Europe. Different countries, as you'll know, have different access to drugs, different clinicians that are involved. As a summary with regards to the registry, it's a really valuable piece of information. It's only going to get more valuable as, as the data matures. But it provides us with this very large group of patients, 3,000 men, treated in a, in a real-world setting, not clinical trial patients, so reflecting an older patient population that we actually see in our clinics. And we'll really see what effect those drugs are having, the sequence and availability of those drugs and how they, how they work in the clinics that we're doing every day.